Welcome back to Pipe Organ Stops. It's the perfect morning for a scenic walk in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Not far from where I was staying in Haverhill is the beautiful Bradford Rail Trail. This scenic 1.3 mile trail stretches down what used to be part of the Pan Am Rail Lines. It was purchased by the city and stretches roughly between the Kumo and Basilier bridges. It was recently completed and is open to pedestrians and non-motorized vehicles. Along the trail are several works of art created to complement the experience of walking on the trail. Each work of art has its own theme. Some of the artwork celebrates the history of Haverhill, which was settled in 1640 and eventually became a significant city for manufacturing shoes and hats. Plaques with QR codes allow walkers to learn more about the artwork and the artist who created it. It was truly effortless to get caught up in the sights and sounds of my surroundings as I made my way slowly along the banks of the Merrimack River. I was delighted to learn that the rail trail will see further expansion in the future. But for now, the artwork gradually led me up from the paved trail and onto the Main Street Basilier Bridge. This is really cool. I've always had a deep fascination with lighthouses. I was absolutely delighted to see one designed into the structure of the bridge. After my morning walk, I would soon be meeting up with Ryan Bartasevich of the Andover Organ Company. This morning we were headed to the neighborhood of Brighton in the city of Boston. Ryan was going to show me an instrument at St. John's Seminary. I just love this architecture. Archbishop John J. Williams founded St. John's Seminary in 1884. It is the spiritual academic center for well over 100 seminarians and approximately 60 lay students. St. John's Chapel, not originally part of the seminary, was constructed in 1899 by the McGinnis and Walsh construction firm, who were renowned for their magnificent and innovative architectural designs. Ryan led the way as we headed into the seminary. We walked down a hall to the chapel and Ryan turned on the lights. My tour of the organ began at the new console, patterned after a 1913 Hook and Hastings design. This is elliptical jams, which is something, and the knobs go straight out, and they're oblique. They're not, uh, it's not a French terrace. This is what the Americans were doing about this time period with the lyre music rack. It's a beautiful console. Ryan showed me how Dr. Janet Hunt, music director at the seminary, had used the recording playback system. Let's just, well, let's see what else she's put on here. Looks like she's got two. So yeah, okay. here we go. Are you ready? I let the ambience of J.S. Bach wash over me as I walked around and admired the amazing architecture and artwork. I had read that the Twelve Apostles are depicted three separate times throughout the room. We headed up to the loft where I could get a closer look at the organ case. I got to see the newer ranks mixed in with some original pipework. I glanced up above the case to see a mural of musical instruments and thought it fitting that a portative organ was at the center. In the 1870s, the Hook brothers were at the end of a flourishing and successful organ building career. They found their successor in the person of Francis Hastings. The Hook and Hastings Organ Company went on to build many more instruments, one of which is the Opus 1833, built in 1902 at the seminary. 
with developing organ technology, the company decided to use what was then experimental electro-pneumatic slider pallet wind chests. Due to several contributing factors, the organ had mechanical issues and eventually fell into disrepair. By 2004, a small Simmons one-manual six-rank positive organ was functioning in its place. By the time the Andover Organ Company got on the scene, the positive organ had been relocated. Another issue with the organ was visual style. Originally a Victorian concept, the case was altered in 1946 to add in Italian Renaissance elements, leaving the overall affect a patchwork of styles. Several elements of the case, such as the crucifix and facade pipes, underwent some detailed enhancement to strengthen the Renaissance look. Geometric patterns that resemble embossed pipework, painted leaves, and gold leaf overlay on the pipe mouths were the work of Mary Lou Davis, a professional in the field of preservation and historic recreation. High atop the case, the cross now glistens with its beautiful painted look of lapis lazuli. On a physical scale, Andover was able to preserve and use much of the original Hook and Hastings pipework, but also expanded the organ, adding an unenclosed choir division and significantly augmenting the pedal division. Brand new slider chests were built for all the divisions, and the console was outfitted with the latest in combination action, recording capabilities, and even wireless access. What once was a two-manual 18-rank accompanimental instrument is now a three-manual 34-rank masterpiece capable of playing the organ repertoire. Welcome to the Andover R500. I'm super excited to be here. This originally was a Hook and Hastings, and here are the three manuals. Swell, great, and here's the choir. Down below, pedal board. We have the swell expression pedal and then a crescendo pedal. Over here on the right, on the top we have the grate. Down underneath these are the pedal and our couplers, pedal couplers. Over on the left, up above, here are swell stops and down under that, the choir and manual couplers. Let's start off sampling the grate. First we have our 16-foot Borden. Eight-foot open diapason. Eight-foot doppel flute. Eight foot spitz flute. Four foot octave. And here's the fifteenth. Mixture. breaking back. And finally, here's our eight-foot trumpet. There's the grate. Down below, we have our fully loaded arsenal of puddle stops, which is awesome. 32-foot Grand Borden. hear that on my phone, but uh, it's nice and powerful. 16-foot diapason. Mm. 16-foot Borden. Mm. 16-foot Lieblich Gedeckt, which is coming from the swell. Foot principle. Eight foot flute, also coming from this well. Four foot. 
foot octave. Here's the four foot flute. Down below, here's the 32 foot contra trombone. Sixteen foot trombone. Sixteen foot bassoon. Coming from the swell. Eight foot tromba. Finally, our four-foot oboe. There's the pedal. Coming over now to the swell. Here's a 16-foot borden. Eight-foot open diapason. Eight foot stopped diapason. There's an eight foot solitional. The voix celeste. And the two of them together. sound. Four foot violina. A four foot flute harmonique. And the two foot flautino. Underneath that is the swell mixture. Sixteen foot bassoon. The eight foot trumpet. Eight foot oboe. Let's try out the swell tremolo. So let's do stop dive pacing, two foot. Very gentle tremolo. And now moving to the choir. We have the eight foot dulciana. Eight-foot chimney flute. Four-foot spitz principle. Two and two-thirds nazard. Two-foot piccolo. Three fifths tears. And here's the eight foot Cremona, and this is our reed. And let's hear it with the choir tremolo.
and you can hear how it gradually fades off when you kill the, the tremolo. That was a lot of fun. Another exciting pipe organ. So, until I see you again, have fun at the console. <laughs>